Vai, vai lançar a corte do ar. Portanto, esta tarde já vão ter. So, I just telling them that okay. uh, this afternoon there will be uh, your book will be available to to buy, and then we we'll have a signing session with the player. So, uh, I just let you talk about technology and. Uh, okay. I'm just showing the video here for the book that's going to be launched later. The book of the year. This was done by the English uh, publisher, Harper Collins. A manga and a Japanese film to get. But uh, the society is actually a Victorian one, which I'll talk about a bit more after the, the video is finished. similar to Ricardo's there in terms of you know the sort of creation of my world and how I got there. Um, Technology has always been fairly important to me, generally speaking anyway, in that my, my first job as a, as a graduate leaving university was working for Apple Computer and uh, that was back in the sort of early 1990s and they stuck me in front of this thing called Apple Link which was a pre-internet bulletin board system and they, that, you know, they showed me that and said, how would you like to run this for us? And I didn't think, oh, you know, great, it's a free internet thing, I should be setting up PayPal, I should be setting up eBay and Amazon, I could be a, a multimillionaire next year. I thought, oh, this would be really good to publish an online science fiction magazine. And that was SF Crow's Nest there uh, in the early days. We were actually, next year we'll be 21 years old, which in internet dog years would probably make us about 100, I think. And sometimes I feel that old myself when it comes to the internet. But, uh, so I, I was involved in science fiction really for, for a good sort of yeah, 10 years before I, I got published with, with, the, with the websites and that kind of thing. Um, I actually got into publishing the books quite by accident in that uh, I, I, I knew a guy called John Jarrold who's an editor or was an editor for, for a number of big publishing houses <coughs> in the UK. And he switched to being an agent. Um, and I, at the time, I was thinking about writing a novel. And he was literally just set up shop as an agent. And he said to me, well, how would you like to be my first client? And I thought, great. I suppose I'll have to write a book then. And he said, yes, you will. <laughs> so I said, well, what sort of books do I write? And I've got ideas for science fiction books. And I've got ideas for fantasy books. And he said, well, fantasy books typically tend to outsell science fiction by about sort of six or seven to one in terms of numbers in the UK and the USA. So I thought, well, hey, I'll write a fantasy book then. Now, one of my own sort of thoughts as a, as a, a very heavy reader of fantasy at the time was I was actually getting quite bored by the traditional fantasy novels, um, things like Robert Jordan and The Wheel of Time. It was just becoming a bit of a soap opera. You were kind of getting onto book seven and forgetting what had happened in book four. And all, all the sort of fantasy worlds at the time that were popular tended to basically be medieval. So you're looking at you know, horse riding and sword fighting and that kind of sub-talking genre. And I thought, well, I'd rather actually write in a society that is a lot different to that. And the society I was most familiar with and having studied it at uh, school and, and to a certain degree at university was really the 18th century and the 19th century in the UK. There were always periods of history that held enormous amounts of fascination for me. Um, you know, the Napoleonic period in particular just seemed to be such an amazing world where you have, you know, basically science just starting off really with the Industrial Revolution. And you had a, a kind of an open world really with new worlds being discovered in America. And it just seemed this kind of, it was really a time of kind of lim lim limitless possibility, both in terms of the science of, of things as well as everything else. And, uh, you know, the fact that you could be Napoleon and kind of rise up as a, a little kind of corporal of, of artillery and just decide, hey, I know, I'll take over Europe. That'll be fun. I'll make myself improve Europe. And, yeah, just that kind of idea seemed, seemed to be, uh, hold great interest to me. And also one of, one of the things that was fed into my writing a lot was the, the world of comic books, I guess, to a certain degree. 
And one of my favourite comic books growing up was a series called The Trigon Empire by a guy called Don Lawrence, which was very big in the 1950s and the 1960s. And he had kind of set up a fantasy world really based around the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire in classics, but kind of introduced a kind of Flash Gordon type feel to it with rockets and, and uh, laser guns and that kind of thing. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to have a, an 18th or 19th century world in the same vein? Um, and that, that's really what I set out to explore as an author. Um, also, I, I was, I, I guess, reacting slightly against J.R. Tolkien, in that I, I guess you're all mostly familiar with the, work, you know, the works of Lord of the Rings and how, how J.R. Tolkien got there. But it really, for, I think for J.R. Tolkien, what the Lord of the Rings was, and all, all his other books, was a chance to kind of explore and build a very, very detailed world up from nothing and put his, his language, languages, because of course he was a professor of languages, into, into action in a world and kind of create a, an Anglo-Saxon mythology that hadn't really existed or if it had existed had been kind of wiped out along with the Druids and the Norman invasions. And I thought, well, to me there's a, there's a whole kind of mythology of how the English and how the British world really was that had come about through the 18th century and it wasn't the kind of twee world of hobbits and let's have a nice little smoke and oh here comes Gandalf and, and that kind of the world of the Shire. It was, it was the, the true 18th century world of gin lane and drunks and alcoholics and the British people kind of going abroad just to conquer nations like India for, for the heck of it and free trade and that kind of thing. And so I, I really wanted to introduce all those elements in, into a novel uh, and kind of almost play, play sort of satirical uh, themes along with it. So uh, in, in my world you have the main sort of kingdom, which is a pseudo-English kingdom, it's called uh, Jackals or Jacaria. And that really is, is a kind of a, a, a slightly skewed 18th century England in many ways. So you have a, 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 a democracy which has been in existence for about 700 years. And that uh, is ruled over by the House of Guardians, which is really a substitute for the Houses of Parliament. But when they, when they get onto the debating floor, rather than having debates where people will, will argue uh, you know, with rhetoric, they basically fight with um, these great big wooden sticks called debating sticks. So if you're a Prime Minister and you get challenged, you'll basically get the Minister of the Opposition or come out with a great big stick, and they have to have this kind of ritualised staff combat to decide if the motion gets passed or not. And it, it was sort of playing with a lot of the actual, uh, the kind of strange rituals that actually do exist in Parliament. So for instance at the moment in Parliament, if, you, uh, if there's a certain sort of motion that needs to be called, they've got this top hat, uh, basically a collapsible top hat, that has to be thrown about like a frisbee, and they'll kind of, you'll see this sometimes if you're actually in Parliament, they'll, they'll get this top hat and kind of open it up and throw it to each other. And there's all these very strange rituals that sort of date back to, you know, the 17th and 18th century. And I was really sort of having quite a lot of fun with those in my book. And um, one of the things I was very keen to do was coming from a kind of a background when I was a lot younger of being very much into games like Dungeons and Dragons and Traveller and all the kind of role-playing games. I was obviously very fond of doing a lot of world creation through that. I mean, typically, I guess... Many people who, who have become writers, of which there are many, who were first into Dungeons and Dragons, one of the criticisms against their work is that you can actually be a bit too detailed and a bit too anal about how, how much work you actually put into creating a world and the maps and the languages. And, and it's always held a great fascination to me that the kind of some authors do go to that amount of detail and can be quite successful out of it. I think some of the, uh, the examples of people like that are J.R. Tolkien who uh, you know, was notorious for, you know, he has the languages for, for Elven and all the other races down pat. And uh, certainly some of the science fiction series that you see, like Star Trek, they have their Bibles, which are sort of great big tombs this big, where they'll have, you know, the Klingon language in detail, Klingon society, all the Klingon operas actually mapped out. And the fans can really get into that in, in a great degree of detail.